The Texas Supreme Court has rejected a challenge to the state's strict abortion ban brought by a group of women who had serious pregnancy complications. The plaintiffs were not trying to repeal the ban, but they did want the court to make a clarification on the law and to have more transparency around exceptions to the law. Texas Governor Greg Abbott and Texas Attorney General Keg Ken Paxton both applauded the ruling. But one of the plaintiffs, Amanda Zerkowski, slammed the court's decision. She told NBC News that the court made clear, quote, they do not wish to help pregnant Texans. Zerkowski testified that she nearly died from a life-threatening infection after being denied an abortion when she suffered complications around 17 weeks of pregnancy. Joining me now is one of the plaintiffs in that case, Jessica Bernardo and Molly Duane, an attorney for the Center for Reproductive Rights and the lead attorney for the plaintiffs in this case. Thank you both for being here. Jessica, I want to start with you. You, of course, were one of the plaintiffs on this case. So what was your reaction to Friday's ruling from the Texas Supreme Court? Um, well, first off, thank you for having us on here. Um, I was very disheartened. I'm still processing quite a bit of what happened, what the opinion was, um, but I was very sad. Um, this just means that more women will be at risk of complications of potentially death um, and significant heartache and trauma. Mm. And as you talk, Jessica, about heartache and trauma, I know you've faced your own uh, trauma. You had serious complications during your pregnancy. Um, why did you feel it was so important to, to really share that experience and tell the world about what you faced? Sure. Um, I was just in complete shock that my unique situation um, wouldn't allow me to have that exception for um, an abortion, which is the necessary health care that I should have received. Mm -hmm. um, I was just completely in awe and you know, that was significant PTSD and trauma to me. And I couldn't imagine what other women are going through as well. Um, I at least have the means to be able to travel out of state. And I just, just kept thinking about the women who don't have the same means that I do. Mm. Um, and as you think, Molly, I want to go to you because Jessica's talking about not of women who maybe would be trapped in Texas. So I wonder, after this latest ruling, what is the Center for Reproductive Rights' um, next steps going forward? Is there further legal action you're possibly pursuing in the, in the state of Texas or, I don't know, maybe nationally here? Well, thank you for asking the question. I mean, what I want people out there to know is that the Center for Reproductive Rights will never stop fighting for pregnant Texans and people around the country who are struggling to access abortion care, which to be clear is life-saving, health-saving, fertility-preserving healthcare. That's all that it is. Uh, what we saw with this ruling is that the court wrote our plaintiffs out of the opinion entirely. It said that we were just dealing in hypotheticals when, you know, you're looking at Jessica right now. She could not be less hypothetical. She is a real person who received a fatal diagnosis during her pregnancy and was told that she was at serious risk of developing a life-threatening infection. And no one in the court or in the state has actually grappled with what it means to be someone like Jessica. And that is truly disturbing. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to, to point out that the Texas Supreme Court um, said something that really also sounded like a, a, a lot of supportive abortion rights who have interviewed on this topic said that the court held that doctors who come to the conclusion that a patient's life is threatened um, unless they have an abortion, but say that the law prohibits them from simply um, having an, uh, giving them an abortion, that they're simply wrong for, for coming to that conclusion. Is legal action the only way to overcome this chilling effect on Texas doctors and, and really hospital administrators who sometimes have to make the decision to tell the doctors if they can do this? Well, both the physicians and the patients in our lawsuit have looked to everyone in the state who has accountability. They have asked the Texas Medical Board for clarification. They have asked the attorney general and the governor and the legislature for clarification. And then they look to the courts as well. And what we're seeing is that everyone is pointing fingers at each other and saying, go somewhere else. This isn't our problem. And while the Texas Supreme Court, you know, made some vague uh, sympathies towards our clients, they didn't solve the essential problem that physicians have been complaining about for years which is they are facing life in prison, loss of their medical license, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines if someone later second guessed their judgment. And the opinion that we saw on Friday really provides very little clarification 
or or barrier for them to be um, practicing their profession in an untenable atmosphere. So what's next then, Molly, here, as you look at, at the way forward, especially legally the way forward? Well, you know, litigation is one of many tools. Obviously, I'm a litigator, and so I'm a courtroom lawyer, and we will be looking at the decision in, in more detail and determining what, if anything, really remains of our original lawsuit. But, but there are lots of things that folks can do. They can advocate to the Texas Medical Board, as many of our clients already have and are continuing to do. They can, you know, talk to their legislators about what comes next. They can ask for a solution at the federal level, which, yeah. you know, truly seems like what is necessary to, to protect protect Texas women and pregnant people. And so, you know, we are helping our clients think through all of their options, but it is really a, a scary time to be pregnant in Texas. And Jessica, you know, you, of course, lived through your own harrowing experience. I wonder, what would you say to other women who are facing difficult pregnancies in Texas right now? Um, have a backup plan, unfortunately. That sounds terrifying and awful. But have a backup plan, know where you might need to travel out of state. If you don't have money, start saving money just in case. You know, you want to save money for that bundle of joy that you're welcoming to the world. I know babies are expensive, but if you risk that heartbreaking tragedy, um, have that money set aside for your need to travel out of state in order to save your life or your vital organs. Yeah, I've talked to a number of women uh, who have said that they really spent a lot of money um, accessing the care that they that they needed. So thank you, Jessica, for sharing that message and for sharing your story. And Molly, thank you for, for talking about the strategy going forward. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.